So good morning everyone, it's Marie Jenkins from Advance Your Wellbeing and today's episode we've got the lovely Louise Roberts. Hi you Louise. Hi Marie, how are you? I'm excellent, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Excellent, I'm looking forward to it. It's your first one as well, your first podcast. It is, yeah, it's a bit scary, but you know how it is. Yeah, one of many. I believe you've got more in the pipeline, so that's exciting. I have, yeah. Yeah, I'm looking forward to doing both. Yeah. Fantastic. So let's start by, could you tell me who you are and what is it that you do? Okay, so my name's Louise Roberts and my business is Alimenti Food Sciences and I work with food owners food business owners to um, create food safety systems for them and that helps them to sleep at night because often they're waking up at three o'clock in the morning worried about their food safety the documentation in place have they got everything they need in place to make sure the food they produce is safe and legal so that's what i do yeah so a very very important job really supporting those are they manufacturers are they what what are they we tend to be small food producers, so up to 20 people. Not very big, but big enough. Right, okay. That's interesting. We'll talk a bit more about that then in a little while, but I'm more interested to know a bit more about you, really. So okay. how did you even get into food safety? Because, you know, what what's the path? <laughs> okay, so I started out, my first food safety inspection was when I was working for a cafe. Um, I was the um, the cook. The I started off as wash, washer up, and then I moved to waitressing. Then um, ended up being the cook, um, taking over from the boss when he wanted to go on holiday. Um, and then the HO turned up one day and was like, "Hello, I'm the HO. Um, I need to see what you you're doing and your records." And I was like, "Okay," but given that this was pre the Food Safety Act, the law wasn't quite as um, specific as it is now so when my boss came back he was really cross because I'd let the year show him but I was like well he said you needed to come in so I let him in what was I supposed to do um yeah so that was my first experience of food safety I guess and from there I went to college and studied microbiology and oh, wow. really got into microbiology um and I'm incredibly squeamish so I can't do clinical microbiology can't deal with blood and guts and things like that so um <laughs> Ended up doing food. Worked in a milk marketing board creamery down in Cornwall. Oh, wow. Microbiology and other things and just really enjoyed the microbiology side of things. I went to work for Tesco as a microbiologist. And then went from there, had some children, had my two of my daughters and then went to work for a pork processor and technical <laughs> manager. Um, that got rid of some of my squeamishness with regard to meat because I was obviously handling the meat. Big yeah. chunk of um, and then went on to train to be a teacher because I thought that's something I would like to do. Train, that wasn't something I wanted to do at all. Working with the army, they had a brand new food manufacturing facility put into a new build, PFI, Finance Initiative which they needed a technical and training manager for. And it was me that they chose. So that was really interesting, fascinating times. Being a civilian inside a military base was just amazing. Learned so much about the way the military work and the whole language that they have as well. Wow, wow. Yeah. So <laughs> what, what took you to actually set up your own business then, Louise? Okay, so when I was working for um, Sodexo in the military base in Colchester, then I went to work for the head office. As part of that role, I was coaching small business owners through our online approval process to get them ready for audit. And I really, really enjoyed it. So I decided I'd go out and start on my own. So that's a very brave step. Um, yeah. And... and thinking about like today whereby there's so many people having sort of side hustles and you know lots of talk around the gig economy and that sort of thing what what do you see as the biggest opportunity for entrepreneurs and, and new startups now 
think it's creating an agile business, business that can respond even though they grow to be bigger businesses, because once you're in a big business, there's often lots of layers of bureaucracy and decision making that has to make happen. They don't become very agile. Yeah, so so smaller businesses have got that opportunity to sort of pivot and fine tune their services. So how how have you found it as a business startup? Yeah, I think the biggest lesson that I had was that marketing isn't just coming in, which when you're working in the corporate world, the marketeers seem to get all the gizmos and the gadgets and um, they don't seem to do a lot, but obviously they were doing a lot more than you realise. <laughs> um, so yeah, I kind of left the corporate world with this vision that the marketing was just something that you did, just a kind of coming in exercise and realise now that it's the precursor to sales. So yeah, really important part of my business. Yeah, massive, massive. What what advice do you wish you'd have been given before you started your business now on reflection? That I'd have to spend a lot more time on admin than I realised. Um, <laughs> yeah, I thought I'd be going out helping businesses with their food safety and that would be all I'd be doing, but there isn't, there's a lot more behind it than that. So, yeah. Yeah, I think it's a fantastic opportunity to learn lots of different skills. So marketing is another thing. Social media is, is huge now. So video content. And I think it's about finding and the right sort of other entrepreneurs and, and partnering up with them as well. I think that that helps. Yeah, definitely. But, so let's go back to your business. So your business is called Alimenti, is that right? Right, yeah. Yeah, so can you give me sort of some scenarios of what sort of businesses that you go into? I go into all sorts of businesses, um, from startups through to really established businesses that want um, support with their accreditation. Within the food industry, you've got at least two different forms of accreditation that the retailers want. One of them is called Salsa, which is for small businesses, and the other one's BRCGS. And the BRCGS is the kind of the gold standard, it's what everybody aims for. So I recently qualified to apply to be both Salsa and BRCGS auditors. Nice. I decided I'd invest in my, my development and um, yeah, I got the got the um, accreditation so I can now apply to be an auditor for both, support my businesses even more. That is fantastic. Congratulations, Louise. Thank you. Yeah, I've got my certificates on the wall behind me. <laughs> How wonderful. How wonderful. So can you give me an idea what sort of businesses are they? Are they food production? Are they cafes? Or are they, you know... So the sort of businesses that I work with are food producers rather than cafes and um, restaurants. They, um, they're they what I would call the retail end of the business. So I'm working with pallets, not packets. People that are producing um, for other businesses to sell their products. Right. OK. OK. So I'm getting a clearer idea now of the sort of customers that you have. Mm -hmm. Um, and that you say they're smaller businesses as well. Yeah, the smallest customer I've got is one person, and the biggest is about twenty people. So yeah, it's good. Yeah, fantastic. So can you give me an idea of some initiatives that you've been involved in as part of yeah. delivering for your business? Yeah, um, I've helped businesses with their approval. So when you are a business that's producing food and you're producing animal products, you need to have approval from your local environmental health officer. And that's the oval sign that you see on packaging with a number and a GB against it. That means that they've got approval from their local environmental health department to produce that product. And that has a whole set of legislation behind it. So I've helped my customers to get approval um in some instances and others i've helped them to start up their businesses they've pivoted from other types of businesses be that a takeaway or a pub 
and they've decided to be an agile business and um, pivot. Ah, okay, fantastic. And I've looked on your website. Um, you've got a fantastic website on there and you've got all sorts of resources. Oh, thank you. Yeah. So it's all my <laughs> It's what, sorry? My own work. It's brilliant. It's really good. So <laughs> I'd signpost people if they they need some help and sort of some idea of what sort of things you can do for them to visit visit your website is, is a brilliant resource so yeah take we'll give details about that as well in a little while but so can you recall a time when you've been running your business that's been the most rewarding for you yeah I think when a client said to me that she was sleeping because she wasn't and that was obvious in the emails I was getting at three o'clock in the morning and she said that now she felt the business was in safe hands from a food safety perspective, so she was getting her sleep. I was like, yes, brilliant. Oh, that's a result. That's a result. So do you do you normally have like a dedicated person within a business that's responsible, or is it everybody's food safety is everybody's responsibility in that industry? It is definitely, yeah. You've got everybody's responsible for the food safety of the food they're producing everybody can be prosecuted actually as a food handler you can be prosecuted just as much as the owner of the business to make sure that um you've got everything in place and you're recording everything correctly as if there was a prosecution of somebody where they were in a pub where the lady had died on a christmas meal and the people who were in the pub had falsified the records so they then got prosecuted themselves and obviously the the business that they were working for also got prosecuted but yeah wow so like, I, sh I should imagine there's a lot of training that needs to go on then for staff as well yeah um the law says that you have to be trained commensurate with your role so if you are producing um cakes for example then that's the training you need to do whereas if you're producing um cooked chicken and cooking and being responsible for the safety of the chicken and that's the training you need to receive wow so there's, there's a lot to it then yeah there is yeah <laughs> there is yeah there is I mean, and like when you said earlier about the training that you did um to be what you do like to to do what you do i think i think you understated it but it is actually real full qualification can you tell me a bit about that what was included yeah so that was a week the brcgs lead auditor course was a week of intensive training um i did it online because obviously the circumstances at the moment are that you can't meet in person um so that was quite intimidating because i'd never done an online training like that before on in such depth but the training was really good. So um, I had the resources that I needed and we could ask questions, which was what I was worried about, but yeah. Brilliant. Was, um, you needed to have a certain level of qualification and experience before you did the course as well. They made sure that you had that, which was important. Yeah, yeah. So what, what would be your advice to anybody who sort of, is sort of interested in doing what you do? What would be your advice? Um, you need to have the experience of working in lots of different industries. That's something that is really important. And you need to be a good communicator as well. You need to be able to, be able to communicate the importance of what you're doing to all levels of people, from the cleaner through to the MD. It's really important that everybody can understand what you're doing and how important it is what they're doing. Yeah, yeah. I, I believe that cleaning isn't the end of a role, it's the beginning of a process rather than cleaning up you're cleaning to get ready to prepare the food yeah i can imagine like cleaners especially in kitchen environments and like fac factory environments and stuff having really great cleaners is is sort of paramount if you like to what yeah. what the result is when you're introduced yeah yeah, definitely. Um, I was involved in an initiative run by 3M, the Post-it people. They also do all sorts of different things. One of the things they do is rapid hygiene monitoring. 
Which and, is what, uh, sorry? Hygiene monitoring. So that's um, usually to make sure something's clean. You, If you're in a cafe or a restaurant, you do it visually. So you make sure that something was clean visually. Then if you're in a factory producing um, what's called high risk or high care goods, so things that are um, likely to support the growth of pathogens or food poisoning bacteria, then you want to make sure that things are ultra clean. So you um, then can use something called rapid hygiene monitoring, which uses the ATP in the cell, which is the energy molecule of a cell. And you mix that with firefly extract and that produces light. If you measure the light, the dirtier the surface, the more ATP that will be on the surface, the dirtier the surface, the more light that will be produced. So the higher the figure, um, and it can get a result in minutes rather than waiting for days for the micro results to come back. So I was involved with 3M in writing a chapter of a book for um, general release. Wow, Global. what was the book? Sorry? What was the book? It's a handbook. I've, um, I've got a couple of copies here. You can download it as well. How can they find that to download that, Louise? Um, it's, there's a link I put in one of my blogs, but I can share it with you at the end. Brilliant. Well, yeah, if you send that over, I can share that. And what's the title of that booklet, that handout? called Environmental Monitoring Handbook. It's a really, really good resource that 3M have produced um, across the world. They've used experts to share the, the knowledge about environmental monitoring. So environmental monitoring in food is about the surfaces, the hand contact surface, the food contact surface, the air, the water, the surfaces that you um, use to create food. So to me, it sounds like if you've got a real passion for sort of science and microbiology and all of that type of thing, your sort of industry is ideal for you. Definitely, yeah. There's a real shortage as well of technical people coming through at the moment. So, yeah. There's all sorts of um, summer schools you can go to. I know the Cardiff Met run a summer school that you can go to to as a sixth form student to experience food technical side of business, excuse me. <clears throat> yeah. So, um, yeah. Wh where was that, sorry? Where did you say Cardiff that was Met that? University, well, a summer school um, for a week. Right, um, okay. You can go and um, experience the technical side of the food industry. Wow, that's really good. And do they run that every summer? I believe so, yeah. I mean, not this summer, obviously, because of COVID, but yeah, generally they do, yeah. Ah, they might be taking it online then, maybe. Yeah, yeah. yeah so actually that's an area where there could be huge growth. So you're you're quite a unique business startup, really. There are more of me out there, trust me. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Yes, but the thing is, is if there's opportunity there and people are interested in working for themselves as their own startup, this could be a brilliant opportunity for someone. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm creating competition for you, Louise, but we all know that that drives the standards up. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Competition's good. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> brilliant. So... Can you tell me a bit about who's who's inspired you? So, you know, did your parents do this sort of work? Where, what, who inspires you or who inspired you to do it? So my family background, my mum's side of the family were farmers um, going way back. And they were down in Kent and lived in the same village for 250 years. If you look at the family tree and everybody's lived in, in or around the same village, which is amazing. Um, but no, it was um, just fluke, I suppose. I came across microbiology, um, but I've had a couple of people that have really inspired me. One of them was my manager at Sodexo, um, Andrea Lung Cornell, who unfortunately died of breast cancer a couple of years ago. She was a really inspirational manager. And the other one is um, Rosemary's completely gone. Huh. No. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. So, so you've got somebody there that you work with that really inspires you. 
Yeah, definitely. Yeah, Andrew was yeah. amazing. She was a buyer. She knew very little about what I did, but she was just an amazing manager. From a from a leadership perspective, or from a knowledge perspective, or both. Leadership, definitely leadership. Yeah, she was just an amazing leader. Very inspirational. Ah, interesting. And is she still working for that company? No, she died of breast cancer a couple of years ago. Oh, sorry. Yes. Yeah, mm -hmm. sorry. Oh. Well, it's nice that she's inspired you because you've now got your own successful business, which is fantastic. How many years have you been running your business, Louise? Four years. Four years. Yeah. And, and how many people are in your business? There's me, and I'm, then I outsource to a VA and my accountant, obviously. Accountancy scared the life out of me. So, yeah, that was the first thing I outsourced. <laughs> so, like we were saying earlier, as an entrepreneur, you have your particular strength and skill set, and it's great to surround yourself, isn't it, with, you know, those areas that you need that expertise in. Absolutely. And I think it's about recognising as well that you don't have expertise in everything. You can't be the master of everything. So, yeah, it's um, it's that's a really good growth exercise, personally, is just recognising what you aren't good at. Yeah, I totally agree. Totally agree. And I'm really excited because as many of my listeners will know that I'm an EA as part of the Careers and Enterprise Company. And, yeah. and that's with Ridgeway Academy in Redditch. And you're going to be joining me in September. Yeah, I'm really excited about that. I'm going to the paperwork at the moment. So, yeah, it's really exciting. Fantastic. Bring to STEM career to the School of Brilliant. Yeah, absolutely. It's a, it's a brilliant opportunity to promote to the pupils at Ridgeway and, and other schools that are involved with the Careers and Enterprise Company the value of getting into STEM careers, which is which yeah. is brilliant. Yeah, I was quite interested. I've got three daughters and two of them are into STEM. They're both into math. The other one isn't. She's history and English. She's definitely not a STEM subject expert at all. She's brilliant in her history and her English, political science, but not in STEM. It's just amazing. And what about what about the, your daughters that are in STEM? What, what do they do? One of them's a maths teacher, um, and the other one is studying computer science at Bristol Uni. Oh, She's, wow, okay. Yeah, she wants to be a um, computer security expert. That's her uh, aspiration at the moment. Wow. That, so now, that to, is very STEM. It is, yeah. She enjoys puzzles, so she enjoys the cryptography of um, the security. Well, that's certainly a growing industry. So uh, hopefully that will give her job job security in the future. Fantastic. Oh, well, that's nice that you're inspiring your own children into STEM careers. Yeah, I never thought about it before, but I guess I must have done, yeah. Because they always yeah. say, no, you don't want to go into food safety. It's boring. It's just, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Louise. Uh, we've, we've come to our half an hour now. Mm. How can people get in touch with you? Okay, so and I'll also, follow. can you tell me your website address? Because I know it's such a fantastic resource. Yeah, so it's, the website's alimenti, A-L-I-M-E-N-T-I dot co dot UK. Thank you for um, having a look at it and thinking that it's a great resource. That's really flattering. Um, my name's Louise Roberts, so you can get a hold of me on LinkedIn. You can get a hold of me by emailing my um, email address, which is also on the website, which is hello at alimenti.co.uk. Um, and my mobile number's on the website as well. So, yeah, any of those channels are open to you. Brilliant. Brilliant. Thank you so much for joining me. It's really interesting, and I'm very excited about working with you in September with Ridgeway Academy. So uh, it's it's good because we're completely in different industries. So uh, hopefully that will add value to the pupils that we support there. Hopefully, yeah. And no, I'm really excited about it too. So yes, more on September. Yeah, fantastic. Well, thanks for your time today, Louise. You've been a superstar. Thank you.
You're welcome. And good luck with your future podcasts. We'll have to uh, follow you on your social media channels to have a listen. Definitely. Thank you very much. Thanks, Marie. Thanks, Louise.